hall. I'm right. I saw this lighting out. It's not too shiny, but we can still see what we're doing. Come here, you behave. How's that? Okay, doke. Right then, normally, with this, um, we'd do a wash. Which would usually involve me getting some thinners into an old candle holder type thing. Um, I think it's the tea lights or something like that. Put some thinners in. Brush the thinners, usually where's Tony. Brush the thinners all over so it's nice and slick. And then come in with oil paints. These plastic crinkly things are brilliant for pallets. So I would dot and dab all over the place and then squish it all around with a dry brush and all things like that you know what we're going to do this time is have the, the gloss varnish what we're going to do is just go straight in with the oil paint and work it in straight away and this is a, a technique I picked up from model making guru yeah another free plug What we're going to do now, it's basically um, a similar technique I used to use as a kid with enamels, the smelly evil things at the end. They come straight over the top with a rag or a cloth of some description and take it back. It fills the grain in nicely. I do like that. Because it's wood grain as well, um, I'm coming across the grain rather than going with it. If I go with it, I've got a feeling I'm going to take most of that back out. So, with the same brush, I'm going to blend in some... That was... what colour was that? Started off with... Burnt Umber, which is bog standard oil paints which I've had in a drawer for about three years and never actually got around to using properly. So we started off with Burnt Umber. I'm going in now with the Burnt Sienna, which is a lovely golden brown colour. I love this shade. So this is the one I'll be using for Chewy when I get around to him. Show the people what you're doing, Tony. So we're blending a couple of colours together now. So we're getting a rich mahogany. <coughs> oh, clear your throat. Rich mahogany type effect. Which is absolutely gorgeous, it really is. I do like that. And then getting my own faithful towel. Get as much of that paint off as I can. No thinners. Don't use any thinners. If we can, we're going to blend these colours together. So we're going to get most of that off so it's running a lot clearer than it was and then we're going to go in with yellow ochre ochre okie dokie uh, so again double it on get the piece run it over the top blend it in I have got an off cut of an old t-shirt knocking about somewhere, but it's disappeared completely and poof, and it's gone. I do like that technique. Muchas gracias, Mike. That's a blinder. The only problem with this one is uh, you need to leave it about four or five days to dry off. Rule of thumb, if after four or five days you can rub your finger over it and get nothing on your finger, like if I do that now, you see it discolours straight away. So if you don't get any discoloration on your fingers, good to go. Get the thumb in, good to go. Yeah, try again, good to go. There we go. So that's basically the technique we're going to be using with. These fellas, Abtai Lung. So you can't say without something like Richard Hammond. And dear old hamster. It's 
so just out of interest. Again, the base colour is uh, khaki brown. Dear old khaki brown. Uh, let's go with Starship Filth. I'm going to go straight from. No, I'm not. I was going to go straight from the, the tube. Now, this thing, because it's actually designed for models, if I give that a squish, you can, see, you can probably see there where it peaks. The pigment is a lot thinner than the artist paint. The artist paint itself is smooth, but it's not as smooth as the Aptai Long, I've noticed. So you really don't need a great deal of it. As you can see, tiny little dabble, and I'm loaded. So I'm going to into the grooves. That was my chair, honest. Take that back and oh I do like that. I do like that. So that's the general idea. Um I'll tell you what. Just out of interest not done that one. I'll show you the uh engine grease too. Tiny little squish. Wow, that's really oily. That it actually looks like an oil change on an old Sierra or an old Cortina. Oops, where did that go? Under there. It's okay. So that's a lot muddier in flavour. That's more washy. I think I've got more oil there than I did paint. But, ooh, I do like that shade too. So there you go, with five different oil paints, we have five different versions of wood. I do like that. And if you give it a rub that way, we'll move everything side to side and then blend the shades together. Like so, I do like that. Very nice. That's very nice. So that's the general idea now. Um, hopefully that's dry. Yep, that is dry. So you'll see now why I've got the two brushes because I'm not going to be able to get a rag into all these nooks and crannies. I don't think. So I'll be using the second brush to move it all around. That's the thinking. So, Starship Filth. Tell you what. Whoa! Let's use this fella. It's all nice and shiny as you can see. Because I've got the gloss coat on. And then, be brave, straight in. And... Be brave. You'll have a little man in the back of your head saying, no, this is wrong. Ignore him. The voice in the back of your head is a fool. You own him, not the other way around. So we're going to work that into all the little grooves. Because I'm not too bothered about this piece. That's where the, the seats are. That's where the back wall is. So just out of... Good practice. We're going to go right up to the wall and a tiny little bit into where the seats would go. A good little smudge around. Make sure you get it into all the crooks and nannies. Hopefully, shift that line out of the way. Let's 
straighten in with the brush. And you can see straight away it takes most of that paint back out again. And so I used to do this in the um, in the 80s, if anybody remembers the, the Blinden system, which isn't easy to say. And so that technique was done with um, with enamels, mostly on figure painting, um, which is how I started off in the Hobbit originally. Now for these white parts, I'm just going to get a box standard cotton bud. Don't tell the missus. But yeah, this is where they ended up. <coughs> Nothing or anything like that. Just come straight over the top onto the white part. It brings it back a tiny little bit more focus. You can see on the the section on the left that I've just done is a lot a lot brighter than. The one on the right. I do like that effect. I really do. So we've now covered what would traditionally be done with a wash. And we've done a filter at the same time. All in one fell swoop. Just using one oil paint. A fantastic technique and I really do appreciate your help on that one Mike I'm converted I'll just use the cotton bud just to smooth every nose out so there you go that technique is brought to you by the model making guru links in the description and under here somewhere now I've got another battery light flashing up in this top corner so I'm going to stop here and we're back Get up. so I shall put the cleaning brush on the left hand side that can now go away off to one side and dry for four or five days which isn't too bad because I'm back in work um, day after tomorrow and I'm in straight and it's forever things like that now this is the part that I'm really, really looking forward to. Now, yes, people are going to be screaming at the TV and things like that. Well, how are you watching this? That white is absolutely shocking. I'll just put oil paint on the side of my camera. <laughs> um, that white is shocking. It's not the best of coats or anything like that. I didn't want it to be for this reason. I wanted to see how this blends out. See what it looks like. Let's get some more on the brush. So again, Starship Filth. I can see some white dots there where it's not quite going in. Behave. Help me. And the backwards and forwards that I'm having with Mike at the moment about this technique. It's been officially labelled as a gunk wash and I do like this, I really do don't use your best brushes for this one these things I've had for about 8 years and they are super soft and I do use them for oils uh, you can buy these from any good craft centre or hobby shop or uh, where did I get these from? I've got these from a garden centre, I believe. You have a, a craft shop inside. And there's a couple of white spots in there that are really annoying me. I can't quite get into them. If in doubt. Get a load on your brush. Focus. See if that works. <laughs> and the best thing I found with this stuff as well, this Abtei Lung, is oh shush, a tiny little bit really does go a long way.
So, gunk brush off to one side. Blending brush, I decided to call this. Get off as much as I can with the brush. I'm thinking I should have put a glove on. So I'm about to get it all over my fingers. As I'm doing this, um, Mike has just posted on YouTube his final build video for a Gundam Master class thing. Um, and it looks absolutely stunning. Particularly the base, which was painted entirely in white, and because of the Starship filth and engine grease, I think he used as well. Um, gunk wash it's turned the entire base a really dirty off-white grey colour which looks absolutely stunning alright then I'm happy with that let's get a new bud yeah new bud again don't tell the messes this is our little secret Tone uh, filter, I think it's called. Yeah, filter and a wash all at the same time with one paint. Fantastic technique. Right, I'm going to go away and do the rest of this and take some photos that I can post on Twitter and uh, I'll bore other people with who are interested in this technique. So, I'll see you in the next clip. Yay! So, finally, 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 finally. Um, bearing in mind that this was dry brushed with oil paints at the same time as this was. Yeah, um, not dry brushed, gunk washed. Gunk washed, that's the word. Um, I can now run my finger over it, and there's no oil paint coming off. 
which means it's dry, which means I can put more oil paint on. There you go. So, what we're going to do now is a very, very light dry brush with white. Let's get a tiny little bit on there, straight from the tube. Nothing fancy, and then get some. Not wiping it everywhere else. Just to take most of it back off, and then suggest it's a dry brush. And hopefully, we can pick out something on here. Just to demonstrate. So it's still got the exact same uh, finish that we've got on here. So there's the, the glossy type coat, as you can see there from the shine. Yep. And if we come in just here, we'll do the test piece. Literally, really, really fine touch. Just to go over. Now, there's probably still a little bit too much, um, too much paint on there. I'm barely touching the surface. And it just picks out all the raised bits. So, we'll go in there and we'll go on. Hey Arnold, focus. There we go. Just to pick out those raised parts there. It's not much. It definitely gives you a little bit more flavour. So we'll get those dry bits there. Just on the corners. I'm sure the people don't think that might help. And then another couple of days drying. So, where's the other one? There it is. Focus. Focus. Like that. And then the next time we come back to this part. What's that? Where'd you come from? I'm showing you a little trick I've been working on with these two screens here. Uh, I think I mentioned it in another clip. I'm going to be using these as cathode ray type um, display screens because that's what they would have been in 1983 in the actual set part of the cockpit. Same with that tiny little circle there. And there's two more on this side, just here. So I'll be trying to do them as display screens. Um, where have you gone? There you are. So let's get a little bit more white paint. And then once this uh, once this oil paint's gone off and dried, and done its thing over the next couple of days, I'll be coming back with a really, really light grey to focus. Enhance these little button things here just to give them a little bit more colour yeah, colour's a good word I've just finished the night shift and it's impossible for me to think in a straight line at the moment it's freaking me out, it really is so again, just really really lightly going over some of these pieces, I think these three liney things in the middle here, uh, I'm going to be touching those in a silver if I can. such a bad thing. It just brings out the little details. Just gives it a little bit more definition and depth and interest. I like it. It's a good little technique. So 
interesting on these raised corners. It breaks it up and stops it being all one colour. There we go. So that's done. And then we go for another couple of days of drying. Um, I need to do some detail painting here as well. A couple of these little rectangly things are actually display screens too, so I'll be doing them in a really snotty, really snotty green colour. Possibly. Um, that's one of the game colours. Fluo green. I like it. Um, but more on that when we get around to it. Um, ooh! Ha 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 ha! My new gimbal arrived. I like that. This is the old one, um, which was really really nasty. That's the bolt I was talking about in an earlier video, I think, if you saw it. And when you try and screw in that bolt, hang on. There we go. That's better. I'll do the old top down view. You try and screw in that bolt, as you can see, it's like incredibly stupidly hard, and then. All of a sudden it goes pop and everything releases, which is terrible. So when I'm trying to re-angle myself, everything's swiveling around like this. And then I've got to try and connect all that, but the minute you slacken that bolt off there, all that started spinning around, which is why everything's going all wonky and all over the place. Whereas this one, look how smooth that is. So it just shows you. Spend a couple of quid extra, if you can manage it. Lock that off, and then I can move you around and... Oh, it's like steady cam, kind of. With a cold coffee. Um, yeah, if you can afford it, spend a couple of quid extra, rather than get these cheap nasty things off eBay that don't really do anything for you. Because this whole thing is just absolutely shocking. It really is. But it will come in spare for the big tripod that I've got for my wrong hole. For my big, big camera. So it's never wasted. It's always good for spares and stuff like that. So I'll plunk that out of the way. And so whilst I'm waiting for all that lot to dry, I have something else to keep me occupied because this arrived a moment ago. <gasps> yes. Nope, be patient. That's another video. That's the tease. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm horrible. So, a couple of days for the lot to dry. Go that way. Um, these bits are now ready for a satin coat to stop it being as shiny and protect the rest of the oil paint that we've already got on there. And just to show how good that stuff is. If you have a look there, that's the original plastic, and it's horribly shiny. There's the overspray from when I did the original satin coat earlier. Earlier? A couple of days ago? Whenever it was, last week. And it actually dumbs it down a little bit, so it's nowhere near as shiny. That's how good that stuff is. I love that. I can't recommend that highly enough. I really can't. It's an absolutely fantastic protector. But let it dry. Don't be impatient, let it dry, at least overnight, um, otherwise you'll have the the problem I had on there, where they all wrinkled and mm, that's what I'll be doing with the display screens, in there. We'll get around to that in a couple of days time, which for you will probably be 